male body in order to maximize overall vitality. You've heard the reviews and the feedback on how the original super male vitality has revitalized relationships. Now, both the man and the woman can have the revitalization in their own bodies with super male vitality and super female vitality. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com. Here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate, and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Chicago, the quintessential American city, renowned for its innovative architecture, art, and culture of honest, hardworking people. Something is not right in this all-American city. There is a quiet technological program that is slowly being rolled out that will further erode the privacy and rights of its citizens. We hit the streets to find out the real story. Here we are at Benito Juarez High School in Chicago, where behind me you can see one of these technological light poles that's been installed. This right here is built as a hybrid system and supposedly all it does is it collects energy through wind and solar to create ambient lighting in the evenings. These systems are usually introduced as a guise for collecting large metadata or for somehow helping the environment in one way or another when we know that the truth is altogether more sinister. First it'll be a system like this, next it'll be a system that's just collecting metadata like the NSA says, and then they'll go beyond that to introduce their complete and total totalitarian system right here in the heartland of America. Behind me is an example of one of the most nefarious systems that's been installed in Chicago. This is a speed camera. These cameras were installed on the streets of Chicago against a major public outcry. These cameras, in addition to the red light cameras, are just more robots using automation to slowly strip you of your right to privacy. And many conclusive studies have actually found that it makes driving even more dangerous. This poll right here is a perfect example of a totalitarian system that's put in against the will of the people to take your rights away. Now let's talk about the sculptures that are gonna be tracking all the data on our cell phones as we walk by. Sculpture, it stirs the senses and as art can feed the soul. Usually we think of it as a passive object, innocuous, or is it? The Chicago Tribune reported that this program was being rolled out into the core of the city. Sensors disguised as decorative sculpture would scoop up big data on the surrounding environment and the people passing below. The sensors would be enabled to observe cell phone traffic and collect data on pedestrian behavior. 
These spy devices would be positioned in the highest traffic areas downtown, along the corridor of the Magnificent Mile and the surrounding loop. The proponents of the system argue that their intentions are pure, that the data gathered would be used only for better understanding the environment and nothing more. However, privacy advocates warn of potential abuses, and that setting this precedence would open the door for further digital intrusion. The most disturbing aspect of this program is that it seems it will be implemented with little oversight and almost no public consent. Here we are across the street from the Tribune newspaper building who published the article about the sculptures that are going to contain the sensors that are collecting your data. We're going to ask some people here in Chicago on the street what they think about that idea. So Chicago is going to be implementing a program where they're going to be putting up sensors on light poles that are disguised as sculptures that's going to be collecting your data as you walk by off of your cell phone. How do you feel about that? Well, I think that this is a complete invasion of privacy. I mean, whatever I'm doing on my phone is my business. It's not the government's business, and it most certainly isn't the people of the world's business. No, that's uh, far out. I haven't heard anything about sensors on statues. That's crazy. But now that I think about it, it doesn't surprise me. Everything collects your data these days. Um, I think it's a really big invasion of privacy. It's kind of unfair. A lot of people have a lot of private stuff on their phones, important information that can really like just mess them up if that ever gets like into the wrong hands. I honestly think that <laughs> that is very dangerous because a lot of people don't have protection on their phones, so it can easily take the information off of your phone and be used for anything and you wouldn't even know it. I haven't heard of the program but it's very um, intrusive in my opinion because um, everyone's entitled to their own you know privacy so they can just access it that's not good. To be quite frank I think you're invading people's privacy. <laughs> in light of all the recent celebrity scandals where protected information has leaked would you trust uh, Chicago with your private information? No, not at all. I wouldn't even trust my friends with it, so I wouldn't trust, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust, you know, Chicago. We don't know what they're doing, and they're not going to tell us, so. No, not at all. Celebrity or no celebrity, you know, it's just an invasion of people's privacy. We should be able to live normal lives without having to worry about a sculpture, having a camera inside of it. Uh, probably not. I'm pretty private about my data. Yeah. I wouldn't trust my own neighbor with my personal information. I mean, I can't trust Apple, who's a large corporation who's supposed to uh, secure my information, and I can't have photos on my phone without being publicized. <laughs> yes, that does go back to proper parenting, but uh, that that's no one's business but my own. Um, no, because there's so many people here that we're all just kind of numbers in a way, and it's like they can do whatever they want. No, I don't trust Chicago with a lot of things. Any way to avoid it is the best way. Talk to the Chicago board and tell them not to put, you know, things on our sculptures and our privacy is important to us. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's kind of bad. They'd get a lot of, like, negative response to it. It's just not going to work out. Make sure you check your privacy notifications and guard your data. That's your information, so you should be uh, protecting it as much as you can. Leave us alone. Sorry. <laughs> I would say prepare to go to the next election and vote for the people who support your privacy and who aren't trying to impose on every person's life and their liberties. Thank you very much. There you have it. So as you can see, there are always people that are trying to take our freedoms and penetrate our privacy by rolling out these quiet programs where they take something as innocuous as sculpture and try to use it against us. This is Buckley Hammond signing off for Infowars.com. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News, but stay tuned because in the coming days, we'll have boots on the ground in New York City. The InfoWars crew will be documenting the remembrance of September 11th, 2001. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. I want to take some time this evening to talk directly to the viewers out there about one of the most important health issues, not just here in the United States, but world 
wide, and that is our water, H2O. What makes the blue planet blue? The social engineers have been manipulating and bombarding the water supply since the 1930s when the communists in Russia, on record, began putting hydrofluorosilicic acid in their gulag work camps water supplies because their chemists had shown in rat studies that it made the population more servile, more docile. If you fast forward to the Nazis in World War II, they adopted it. That is on record and came out in the Nuremberg trials. But it's not just hydrofluorosilicic acid that's added to the water. It is hundreds and hundreds of chemicals that are mixed in with the fluoride that itself is a toxic waste derivative from the fertilizer industries and also the aluminum smelting industry. So we literally pay to ingest their toxic waste. It violates the Geneva Convention to force Medicaid the population. But it doesn't matter that Harvard studies have come out admitting IQ reductions in children that drink it and a sevenfold increase in bone cancer in boys. The system goes ahead with it. So we, as a people, not just here in the U.S., but all over the world, have to take action. And that's why it's essential to filter your water. There are hundreds of different pathogens, industrial chemicals, but also natural toxins that are getting into the water supply. And it is essential to filter your water, not just with a regular store-bought filter uh, that doesn't even cut anything out, just makes the water taste okay, but with scientific gravity-fed filters like the Pro Pure G2 systems. That's why we sell it. It's why we promote it, because for myself and my family, I wanted the very best. Now, recently, we have seen two different uh, events in West Virginia and Ohio, in Toledo uh, and in Charleston and other areas, where we had the deadly chemical MCHM in the water supply that can kill you, so they said don't drink it. And then we also had a deadly naturally occurring algae that got into the water supply. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. So here's the takeaway from what I'm saying tonight. Most people now know that fluoride and its derivatives are deadly and are being added to the water supply as social engineering and social control. But what people don't know is that a lot of these overtaxed public water systems, but also well systems as well, have been contaminated by things like microcystin that is a toxin released by a commonly occurring algae. And if you drank this stuff that was in the Toledo water supply, it would kill you. And so for a week, people couldn't drink out of the water. And boiling it doesn't do anything. It's a toxin released by the fungus. This fungus is already in most water supplies. And so what you want to do is reduce or remove it. Most water filters that are out there, you buy at the store, you can go research them. They just reduce any bad flavor. And obviously it's better than nothing, but something like a ProPure G2 system is simply the best for the price because it reduces the non-detectable levels or completely removes or massively cuts back on not just this toxin, but literally hundreds of others. And we've got the test here to show you. Here is an EnviroTech Laboratories in New Jersey, one of the most respected in the country. This is a recent test uh, that just came out uh, in August of this month, so just a few, few weeks ago. And you notice here that it reduced it by 99% reduced that toxin. Most filters don't even take half of it out. If you look at the side-by-side -side comparisons at InfoWarsStore.com, that's just one toxin. Let's look at another one that's very deadly, MCHM. It removed 99.89% of it. Uh, this test was done back in February of this year to point this out by EnviroTech Laboratories right after the West Virginia Gazette and others reported on how they couldn't drink the water for several uh, days, some areas over a week, because again, this chemical got into the water supply in very dangerous levels, MCHM. So there are two different EnviroTech laboratory documents. We'll post this video uh, again up at InfoWarsStore.com in the ProPure uh, G2 filter area so people can see the documentation for themselves. And this only happens 
You only see these big freakouts when.